video on short channel effects in mass transistor. This video is all about the drain induced barrier lowering or you call it as DIBL effect in short. In the introduction video on short channel effects of mass transistor, a clear definition on when a transistor is said to be a short channel transistor is given. And here also I would like to remind you the difference between the long channel transistor and the short channel transistor. So the channel is actually existing between the source and drain and that channel length is denoted by capital L. So whereas in a short channel transistor, we say that the channel length is going to be approximately equivalent to the summation of drain depletion width and source depletion width. In a long channel MOSFET, the current conduction is controlled by the gate to source voltage. If the gate to source voltage is not sufficient, which means if it is less than the threshold voltage, the minimum gate voltage requirement, then the channel faces a particular potential barrier which blocks the flow of current in the device. So once the gate voltage increases the threshold voltage, the potential barrier is reduced and inverts the surface of the channel to a low conduction. So all these working principle of a basic N-type mass transistor we have seen in the previous videos. So all the video links are shared in the description box for your reference. Whereas in a small geometry FET, the potential barrier is controlled by both gate to source voltage and also by the drain to source voltage. So therefore here the inversion is not only because of the fields of the gate but also because of the fields that is existing between the source and drain. So the drain and source regions they come very close to each other and the channel region is smaller and it is easier for the electrons to get into the channel and invert the channel surface. So the field lines that penetrate from the source into the channel obviously terminates on the source and as the source is very close to the channel and the source end of the channel is completely affected because of the drain bias. So this reduction of potential barrier with increase in drain bias is called as the drain induced barrier lowering effect. So this we are going to see in detail with the band bending diagram of N channel mass transistor. We begin our discussion with the band bending diagrams of long channel and short channel transistor. First, let us understand about the energy bands in different types of semiconductor. The balance band is usually present below the Fermi level and the conduction band is present above the Fermi energy level in the energy band diagram. And the Fermi level is the highest energy state occupied by any electron at the absolute zero temperature. So whenever there is an external excitation that is provided, then the electrons which are present in the balance band moves out of it. And because of the external energy, the electrons moves into the conduction band. And both these bands are completely separated by the forbidden energy band gap. For an intrinsic semiconductor, which is a pure form of semiconductor without any doping, the number of holes that are present in the valence band are equal to the number of electrons that are present in the conduction band. Since the charge carriers are equal in the valence band and in the conduction band, the Fermi level lies exactly in the middle of the valence band and the conduction band. Whereas for a p-type semiconductor, which is doped with trivalent atoms like indium, gallium, aluminium and boron, they have deficit of electrons and excess holes. So the majority charge carriers are holes for p-type semiconductor. And as the hole concentration is more in valence band than in the conduction band, the Fermi level shifts downwards near the valence band for a p-type semiconductor. Similarly, for an n-type semiconductor which is doped with pentavalent atoms such as arsenic, antimony and phosphorus then the fifth valence electron which is the extra electron which is loosely bound can be easily excited from valence band to the conduction band therefore the concentration of electrons in the conduction band exceeds the concentration of electrons in valence band and hence the fermi level shifts upwards near the bottom of the conduction band for an n-type semiconductor once we have understood the energy band diagram for the different types of semiconductors, it will be very easy for us to analyze the band bending diagram for a long channel and short channel transistor. 
So first, let us look at the energy band diagram for a long channel transistor with the drain to source voltage to be zero. So initially, both the source and the drain are at ground potential. And here we have the N channel MOS transistor, which I have drawn here, the cross-sectional view, with channel length depicted to be 100 micrometers. So therefore, I say this as a long channel transistor. And here I have drawn the conduction band and the valence band diagrams for a long channel transistor with VD is equal to zero first. And then once we give the potential for the drain side, we are going to analyze what is happening at the band bending diagram for a long channel transistor. So for an N type, the Fermi level is going to be closer to the conduction band and that too for a heavily doped N type source and drain regions, the Fermi level lies closer to the conduction band. Whereas the p-type substrate in an n-channel transistor is not as heavily doped as your source and drain regions. So therefore the Fermi level, though it is closer to valence band in a p-type substrate, it is not as close to the conduction band of source and drain regions. Okay, so this is the Fermi level and this is the conduction band and the valence band. At zero potential for source and drain side. Now let us apply a non-zero potential only at the drain side and also we assume that the gate to source potential is sufficient for the transistor to enter into on state which means I say that the gate voltage is slightly greater than your threshold voltage so that your transistor is on state. So the first case we have analyzed without any potential with respect to drain and source. So now I have started increasing the potential at the drain side. So now what will happen? The conduction band of source and drain is separated by the voltage applied. Okay, so once you have applied the voltage, your conduction band at the drain side starts to decrease. Why it is trying to decrease or widen at the drain side alone is, we are applying a more positive potential for a heavily n-type doped drain region. When it is heavily n-type doped and you apply a positive potential at the drain side, it is completely a p-n junction which is reverse biased. Here we have a p-type substrate and this is n-type and for n-type semiconductor you are applying a high positive potential. So which means this region which is nearer to the drain side, the drain depletion region extends downwards. So how it is extending? Initially you can see the Fermi level was this. Now, once I have applied VD1, which means at the drain side, I apply a positive potential. The first voltage that I have applied is VD1. The EC, the conduction band level, decreases from the previous value. As I start increasing VD1, now I apply VD2, which is obviously greater than VD1. You can see that the conduction band at the drain side has extended further. So as and when the conduction band has extended, the Fermi levels are also dripping down. Okay, so the difference in energy levels of conduction band or the Fermi energy levels are completely governed by the applied voltage. That too for a positive VDS, more band bending happens and the barrier at the drain side is also large compared to the barrier at the source side. So more and more VDS you apply, barrier at the drain side is getting increased and the bands at the drain side alone get modulated. So you don't see any changes with respect to the source side barrier. This is completely because the channel length is very long or the source and drain regions are much largely separated. So whatever is happening at the drain end has no impact at the source side. So the barrier at source has no change irrespective of the change in the drain potential. And the barrier at the source gets modulated only when I apply the gate voltage or when I do a change in the gate voltage. With respect to that, my source barrier decreases and electrons try to tunnel from or try to move from source to drain. And the barrier at the source will be completely modulated only by the gate to source voltage in a long channel transistor. So the conduction of charge carriers depends on the reduction of barrier at the source side and hence the drain side variations are not affecting the conduction of carriers and hence drain current is completely controlled with the applied gate to source voltage. Now let us analyze what happens with respect to a short channel transistor. 
now coming for the short channel transistor analysis with respect to the band bending diagram here i've considered the short channel transistor with zero drain potential so initially as like your short channel transistor i have first done the analysis with respect to the zero drain potential so now you can see here the fermi energy levels are as per your long channel transistor there is no much difference or uh, there is no particular band bending at the drain side or at the source side there is a barrier to surmount from source to the drain for the electrons and you can notice here that the source and drain are going to be closer to each other now let us analyze what happens when i apply a positive potential at the drain side so if the drain voltage is greater than 0 because of the channel length being small and the drain and source regions to be closer to each other not only the barrier at the drain side is going to change but also the barrier at the source side so here also i have uh, given the highlight and portion of source barrier side which was not modulated because we have not applied any drain potential so this is the barrier okay but look at here the barrier at the source side this is also changing with respect to the increase in drain bias usually in a long channel transistor once i increase my vd from vd1 to vd2 the conduction bands were extending downwards and the associated fermi levels were also extending downwards but look at here in a short channel transistor because the channel length is small as the source and drain regions are closer to each other this drain potential is trying to affect the source side barrier so therefore the drain influences the source barrier and hence it is known as drain induced barrier loader in a long channel transistor this source side barrier was completely controlled or modulated only with respect to the gate to source voltage but here it is modulated by the drain bias so drain is induced the conduction bands bend at the drain side and also it is trying to reduce the barrier at the source side therefore drain is induced and barrier is lowered at the source side and this you call it as di bell effect so ultimately what happens is the threshold voltage gets affected so the threshold voltage of the device actually becomes low when we try to shrink the channel length so when the channel length is lower the threshold voltage is also lower previously the threshold voltage was independent of vdos because we always say vth is the minimum gate voltage requirement so that minimum gate voltage requirement which was dependent on vgs is now changing because of the influence from the drain side potential now we have the graph between the channel length versus the threshold voltage so here we can see that as the channel length is decreasing from we were initially at micrometer so now we have moved on from micrometer to nanometer so when we are operating in nano regime nano scale regime actually the channel length decreases so as and when we are trying to decrease the channel length your threshold voltage also gets dropped so now look at here the threshold voltage drop with respect to drain to source voltage in a short channel transistor the drain to source bias is trying to influence the threshold voltage drop since the conduction in the transistor is not only totally dependent or it is influenced by the gate voltage but it is also influenced by the drain voltage and therefore when drain voltage is increased so suppose if you see here from 0.2 from 3 volt you see the increase in the drain to source potential and because of that what has happened it has lowered the source side potential barrier and once the source side potential barrier is reduced with increase in drain bias that is dibl automatically the transistor enters into on state without depending on the gate to source voltage hence vth has reduced you need not even apply more vgs even with minimum amount of gate to source voltage with minimum amount of threshold voltage along with high positive vds your transistor enters into on state and conduction happens whereas in a long channel transistor the drain does not which means the drain potential does not help you in turning on the transistor we speak about only the gate voltage requirement that to minimum gate voltage requirement as a threshold voltage with respect to gate to source voltage 
okay we tuned the drain potential in a long channel transistor only for entering into linear region or for entering into the saturation region so that your transistor behaves as a voltage control variable resistor in a linear region or as a constant current source in a saturation region but here that is not the case as and when you decrease your channel length with increase in drain to source voltage alone you are trying to turn your transistor on which means is which is a completely undesirable effect your gate should have complete control over the channel once that is lost and drain takes control in turning on the transistor that is completely an undesirable or non ideal behavior of a mass transistor so here you can see the definition for drain induced barrier lowering which is del vth by del vds which refers to change in vds the drain to source potential has immediate effect with respect to the change in the threshold voltage so once the threshold voltage is changed we say that the transistor operates in a sub threshold regime so even when the minimum gate voltage is not met your transistor is on which means it has to be in cut off state but we say that the transistor is in on state but that is not desirable because it is a sub threshold conduction of charge carriers that will ultimately lead to all your leakage current issues hope you all have cleared with the concept of drain induced source side barrier lowering which is the dibl effect i have explained you with the band bending diagrams for long channel and for short channel transistor catch you all with the next video on short channel effects of mass transistor until then stay safe thank you all for watching this video through electronics inside channel